people and welcome to that Bible guy and to the continuation of our series on the book of Romans. Today what we're going to look at is the answer to escaping our sinful ways. We all have them, don't we? Sinful ways, sinful nature, not just religious terms. We all know that we fall short in some way. We don't quite live up to the standard that we would probably articulate to others. This is what we should do. We don't always live up to that standard. We all know that. We all wrestle with that. And as Christians, we really are aware of it because we always see the way that we should be or we read about the way we should be. Um, So Romans, as we know, talks a lot about God's grace, which is such an encouraging concept. But in Romans 6, it talks a lot about, well, don't abuse God's grace. Just because he'll give you grace doesn't mean we go on sinning in whatever way we feel like sinning. And it says we can't do that, in fact, because we die to it. We died to sin. We were buried with Jesus. We were raised again through our baptism. How can we continue to live like this? We died to it. We can't live in it any longer. But Jesus demonstrates something in verse 10 that I think is the answer for dealing with our sinful ways. Quick disclaimer, we're all going to continue sinning. What I'm talking about is dealing with the sins that you're aware of that have been lingering for a while our sinful tendencies are worse than other tendencies, maybe. We're all going to continue sinning. But Jesus in verse 10, it's talked about Jesus revealing how I think we should focus on dealing with, again, our sinful ways. Verse 10, the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So it talks about his death, but it gives a contrast to the life he lives. He died to this, but this is the life he lives. So it gives this contrast between the death and life. And then it goes on to say, and this is our key scripture from today in verse 11, in the same way, same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. So we see something going on here. It says, don't offer yourselves to sin, offer yourselves to God. You died to sin, now you're alive to God. You offer the parts of your body to wickedness, offer the parts of your body to God. So it's given this contrast in each situation. It said you died to sin, and you lived in sin, and you offered yourself to sin. Instead of all them things, here's what I want you to do. Here's the things I want you to do. Offer yourself to God. You're alive to Christ. So the Bible doesn't just call us to stop sinning. It doesn't just say stop sinning. It says don't do these things, but instead do these things. Now this is very, very important. And I learned this lesson growing up as I, when I became a stepdad and a dad. I got lessons from my own mother about how to do it. So I brought my stepkids down to my mom's house, and my mom and my stepdad's house, uh, for the for a day or two or whatever it was. And the kids were playing in the garden. And my stepdaughter was playing in the garden. She was playing with the stones and the flowers out the front, and, and she was making a mess, being disrespectful in my mind as a dad, stepdad. And I was like, Zara, "Stop doing this! Stop doing that! Do you do that again? You're coming in." And this repeated itself. Have you been there before? You've been there many times if you're a parent, and maybe even if you're not a parent, an aunt and uncle. You tell, stop doing it, or you'll, or this will happen. Stop doing it. But one of the things my, my mom said to me was, why don't you show her what you can do with them stones? Or tell her what you can do with them flowers? Give her positive instructions about how to use the things that she's currently not using properly. Or maybe when she was eating her dinner, she wouldn't eat all her dinner up. And I was like, if you don't need all this, you're not getting that. If you don't need all this, you're not leaving the table. I try not to be too strong on that, but it's hard not to be when you're a parent and you don't see your kid eating well. But you say, well, why not talk about what she can eat and the good of what she can eat? And it was just tra- changing the, the conversation into being punitive and discouraging, which in work we don't appreciate, but into something positive. Instead of doing this, focus on this. So what's the, th- what's the, th- the learning point in that? Well, we're not to focus on what we're not supposed to do. We're supposed to focus on what we can do. So when you wake up this morning, you don't think, I must not do this. I must not do this. You think, what can I do today? And this is what Romans is telling us. Think about what we can do. I have friends in the church. I remember one time they said this to me about teaching their children and stuff. It was an excellent point, and I've used it ever since. Um, 
Friends very dear to me, the Hannah's very, very dear to me. Um, but they said to me at one time, I remember a few several years ago, instead of lust, and again, this was just me extrapolating on some of the points they were making, instead of lust, talk about purity. Instead of greed, encourage people to be generous. Instead of being anger, angry, encourage people to f- about forgiveness, to forgive. Instead of focus on apathy, focus on perseverance. Instead of laziness, talk about fruitful labor. Talk about labor. The Bible, the Proverbs, is full of talking about hard work and labor. Instead of focusing on the negative trait, focus on what the opposite positive one is. As the Romans are saying here, saying instead of offering your body to sin and the instruments of wickedness, offer yourselves to God. Get up and think in the morning, in the day, today, I don't not do this, I do this. I know with my training that is so much more motivating. If I'm going in to prevent negative things from happening when I train or work out, that's not motivating. Going in to think about what positive thing I can accomplish, that's motivating. That's motivating in work, that's motivating in training, and it's motivating in life and in our spiritual lives. <clears throat> so focus on the positive trait. How does this look? What is your struggle? The first one that comes to mind for me, uh, impatience and frustration. I am hard working, very l- working hard, beavering away all the time. It seems to be my natural state. But what comes with that is impatience. Everybody else is, not everyone else is slower, but sometimes people are slower. People, I want to get things done. I get impatient. I get very frustrated. I get very frustrated at small things. Can you relate to that? Many people out there maybe relate to that. What I had to focus on, focus on was don't Simon, stop being impatient. Simon, stop being frustrated. No, it was focus on peace. How do I have peace? How can I be more at peace? Why am I not at peace? And one of my key scriptures on that, that I always discover, that I lack, which is why I have this, Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know that I'm God. For me, I'm not still enough at times. There's times I must be still. And I don't mean still at night when you're sitting with the kids and you're watching television or a movie or something. And you get, it, it's still time in the morning. It's time to sit and ponder and reflect and look around me and consider all that God has done. Let my mind think and be still. That, that's my solution. So not just get up in the morning and think, Simon, don't be impatient today. Don't be frustrated today. Um, try to, you know, it's focusing on God's peace. How does that sound to you? It sounds amazing, doesn't it? So whatever your struggle is, think of your struggle right now. Your greatest struggle, your greatest sins, the things that burden you and weigh you down, whether you're a Christian today or whether you're not. What, what's the opposite trait that you want? Focus on that. Think about how to get that. Look up scriptures regarding that and you'll see the fruit that comes from that. So Romans 6 today, the answer to escape in our sinful ways, the answers are in scripture. The answers are there. We can shake off the things that hinder us, that so easily entangle with all the scriptures I'm talking about from Hebrews. So hope that's really helped us today. I feel inspired talking about this stuff, just thinking about how God wants to help us to deal with the things that can hold us back. So if this has helped you today, please let me know. I really appreciate just you let me know how that's helped you. Share this on. There are many people out there that have these struggles, everyone in the world actually. Let people know about it. Just hit like on the video. Please subscribe to that Bible Guy if you haven't already. And please subscribe up to my ministry on Patreon if you want to support me as I try to endeavor to get more days in the ministry. I really appreciate all the support I get so far. Thanks so much. Let's get his word out there.